Okay, so hello, hello everyone. Uh, in these little video, this set of videos, uh, we are going to hopefully. I'm just going to try and do something to stop it doing that fuzzy thing. Uh, highly technical. I'm going to turn on my larger light. Oh no, it's not stopped. Never mind. Um, maybe if I turn this one off. Nope. I think it's the camera actually. Or oh, maybe, maybe did it do it? Ah yes, that that that's better. Right. Okay, so um, in this set of videos, we're going to um, hopefully prove um, a uh, a central theorem in complex analysis. I, in fact, the central theorem of complex analysis, which is Cauchy's theorem. Um, okay. So the uh, first um, thing to say is that there is a some a bit of knowledge that you need to know prior um, to being able to follow this video, which is you need to know what a complex function is, uh, so what a complex value function of a complex variable is, and you need to know the um, you need to know what the derivative of a complex function is, the what notions of continuity in the complex plane. These are all very very they're almost identical definitions to in the real case, and you need to know um, the fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, the complex version, uh, because we're going to use that. <clears throat> okay, but from there we're now going to prove that, uh, so first let's just state what Cauchy's theorem is, it's that if we have the um, complex plane here, so um, always think in terms of pictures when you do complex analysis. Uh, complex analysis is lovely because it's an advanced branch of maths where you can still think about it in pictures. And this two-dimensional plane is topologically homeomorphic to the complex, um, to the uh, to the uh, abstract symbolic structure which we call the complex numbers. Um, and it's and the algebra has a very nice uh, physical interpretation. You know, if you add to it, it's equivalent to uh, putting them. Uh, so if you add two complex numbers, I don't know why I'm going into this. Uh, but if you add two complex numbers, it's equivalent to sort of adding the arrows together. And then when you multiply them, you add the angles and uh, scale the lengths. So the fact that there is a geometrical structure which is isomorphic to the uh, abstract symbolic structure means that never ever think in terms of the symbolic structure because no one has any intuition about the symbolic structure. There's a geometrical isomorphism, think in terms of the geometrical isomorphism. The whole point of abstract algebra is that the algebra transcends any realisation of the algebra. The symbols is just one realisation of the algebra, this is another realisation of the algebra. So always think in terms of pictures in complex analysis. Anyway, I didn't know why I've just got sidetracked into that. Um, I meet a lot of people who are determined Determined in advanced maths to say oh, you have to, you can't use geometrical intuition. You must always think in terms of symbols. All of maths is just symbols. No, you've missed the point of abstract algebra. That the structure, there's isomorphisms in nature, and that's and yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so where was I going? Oh yes, right. So Cauchy's theorem. Uh, Cauchy's theorem is that um, is that uh, the integral, if I take a uh, closed loop uh, gamma, here we have a closed loop gamma, uh, well this is actually, strictly speaking, this isn't, uh, gamma would be, is the usual notation for the, um, I'll just straighten this up a bit, gamma is the usual notation for the actual contour, or the curve in this case, um, which means the function so I'll be rigorous, uh, gamma is a function which maps some interval of the real line onto the complex plane, and in this case it's such that gamma of A is equal to gamma of B. And if you take the contour integral around that closed loop of some function f of z, and it has to obey certain conditions, uh, then that will equal zero. Okay, so we're going to um, try and prove this uh, for a very special contour, and I'm sorry about the camera fuzzing, I can't do anything about that, it's just a terrible camera. Um, we're going to pick a very nice curve, which is going to be a rectangle at first, and then we're going to use the rectangle to prove it in the more general case. Okay, so, uh, we will call this rectangle, we'll just call it the imaginative letter R, um, 
and we will integrate it, it needs an orientation, so we'll integrate it around this way. And we've got some function f which maps the complex plane onto the complex plane. Uh, so it's a complex value function of a complex variable. And we want the integral over r of f of z dz. Right. Okay, so here's the first little operation we're going to do. We're going to divide the rectangle into four beautifully equal pieces. So if this is this length of the this side of the rectangle is length L and this side of the rectangle is D, then this piece here will be D over two. D over two. And this piece here will be L over two. Okay, and we can see that the um, contour integrals of each one of these little rectangles, if we add them all together, it's going to be equal to R. So I could write that as, um, what notation do I want to use? This is where the notation gets a bit messy, I'm afraid. Um, so if we call each of these little rectangles, um, we'll call this R0, and then if we call all, all of these rectangles, we'll call that R11, R12, R13, and R14. Then we know that the contour integral, which we're now going to den we'll denote the contour integral around R0 as uh, eta R0. That that's equal to this. So this is eta R0, eta R0. And if you do the same thing, i.e. the contour integral around um, R11, uh, then we'll denote that eta R11. So we can then write eta R0 as eta R11 eta r12 plus eta r13 plus eta r14. And if we have four, these are all complex numbers, every single one of these. We, eta r0 is some arbitrary complex number. We don't know it's zero yet. We're trying to prove that it's got to be zero. But at the moment, it's just an arbitrary complex number. Uh, and these are all arbitrary complex numbers. But what we want to prove, uh, well, a simple observation now is that if you have is that if you have four complex numbers that add up to make this one, then at least one of these complex numbers must have a modulus that is greater than a quarter of the modulus of this one. So why is that? So if I've got four complex numbers and I'm going if I've, well we'll just take two complex numbers to make it simpler. If I've got complex number a, and this is another complex number b, then the maximum modulus of a plus b, with a, the maximum that a plus b can be, is a plus the modulus of b. And that's simply because, uh, well, by the triangle inequality, by simple f uh, facts of triangles, that the time when it's going to have the modulus a plus b is going to be when A and B are in the same direction, when they have the same argument, and then it will be like this, and then the modulus of A plus B will actually have B the modulus of A plus the modulus of B. But whenever they don't have the same angle, then B is going to turn around like this, and the modulus of the corresponding uh, sum of those two complex numbers is always going to be less than the modulus of this. So similarly here, um, wait, what was I trying to prove? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, right, so, uh, if all of these had modulus, uh, so, we can do a proof by contradiction. If what, if all of these had modulus less than a quarter of the modulus of this one, then this one, being the sum of all of these, would have to have modulus less than the modulus of all of these. So it would have to have a modulus less than its own modulus if uh, none of these had a modulus greater than a quarter of the modulus of this one. So, basically, what I'm saying is that the modulus of eta of some r1i must be um, must be greater than or equal to a quarter of eta r0. And simple proof by contradiction, suppose that's not true, uh, then you can prove that this must have a modulus less than its own modulus, which is uh, rubbish. Okay, I'm just going to end this video here because my camera is 